Hi, in this video I have three Dower cameras, they're all 4 megapixel, they're all bullet cameras. I have these two over here, the main difference between these two is the one has a motorized zoom while the other one has a manual zoom. These two are the HFW2431T. And then I have this additional 4 megapixel camera. This is a very popular camera and I've included it here just so that it makes it easier to compare because most people are familiar with this particular model. So this model is the HFW2431SP, also 4 megapixel, and this is what it looks like in hand. In this video I'm going to quickly show you the physical attributes of these three cameras. I'll then take it outside, show you some of the footage in daylight, and then I'll set it up for night view and you can have a look at the night view. I'm not going to do extensive footage comparison. This is really a quick video just so you get an idea of the camera and some of these specifications. Right, let's first have a look at the physical dimensions. Now this one is called the VFS and this one is the ZS. The ZS has the motorized zoom. Right, so you can see the camera is quite long, 25 centimeters. And if you're comparing it to the smaller camera, it's only 16 centimeters. And something that is significantly different is the mass. If I show you the mass of this camera, this is less than 500 grams. Now having a look at the motorized, it is 865 grams. And the manual version is quite similar at 834 grams. Now having a look at the footprint, you can see that the attachment point, 9 centimeters, quite big compared to the much smaller 7 centimeter footprint. Now this camera is similar to the other Dower models. You will just open and close that screw to adjust the camera's view. While both the larger cameras require a torque size 10 in order to open and close these screws. And in order to rotate the view, I have to open this torque screw and then I can rotate it. So it's two screws to adjust this camera. Now all three of these cameras have a little trap door here, which you can open and then you can use the SD card. Right, so over here I've opened all three of these covers, starting with the smaller camera. There you can see there's the reset button. And then if you want to use your micro SD card to do direct recording to the camera, you can insert your card over there. Notice that these screws are star, while these two cameras, everything is Torx. When fitting the cover, notice that this is directional. It only goes one way. Right, now comparing the manual one with the motorized, both of these models look pretty similar. You can see there's the reset switch and there's the micro SD card slot. Same on this camera. Now the main difference between the ZS and the VFS is the zoom feature. So you can zoom in and out and adjust the focus using the software, the NVR software, or directly logging into the camera. I'll show you that on the software a bit later when I show you the video footage. Now the cheaper option is if you use the manual control. You will see there are two posts here, each with a space for a flat screwdriver. You loosen it, you can loosen this with your hand or a screwdriver, and then you will slide these according to the focus and the zoom that you want. Once you've set your zoom and focus, you can tighten these. Best way to do this is to set this up on the site, make sure it's connected to your NVR, or you can directly log into the camera and then calibrate it while it's on site so you get the correct view. I'm not going to close these covers. The placement of these covers are directional. It only fits one way. While it looks like it fits here, it won't. It needs to be fitted the other way around. Right, when installing the camera, the wire can go through the wall or it can come out the side like that. There is a little rubber which you can put back here if you want to hide that, if you want it flush on the wall. The older Dower cameras had an adjustable hood. You could slide this up and down by loosening a nut. These ones do not have any adjustable hoods. The ZS and VFS also do not have an adjustable hood. Now the older Dower cameras had the LEDs in full view. If you'd like to see them, I'll just open the cover here. Right, I'm opening the cover. I just slide my screwdriver in the top there and peel that off. Now you can see that I have four infrared LEDs over here. And on the smaller one, you can see there's one infrared LED. Now that is one of the differences in the specifications. This says it's up to 60 meters, while this one says up to 30 meters. We can see why. Also notice in the specifications, the, the power consumption for these two is significantly higher than the power consumption for this one. I'll show you those specs shortly. Now the cover here is glass on all three of them. 
Right over here, I have the two different cameras. Notice the spec sheet for the ZS and the VFS is the same because the only difference is the one is motorized while the other is not. Right, just having a look at the difference between the two, we can see that the sensor size, the image sensor is the same. The RAM is however higher on the VFS and ZS. Here's the significant difference. The infrared distance is up to 60 meters while here it's 30 meters. One infrared LED on the smaller one and four on the bigger one as I've shown. And then obviously the zoom range, 2.7 to 13.5 while this one is a fixed focal length, you can get it in 2.8 or 3.6. The maximum aperture 1.6 while here it's 1.4. The intelligent video surveillance, they both do tripwire and they both do intrusion. The maximum resolution is 4 megapixel at 20 frames per second, which is the same on the smaller camera. The video bit rate is different. On the larger one, you can go up to 10,000 kilobits per second, while on the smaller one, you can see that it's maxed out at 6,144 kilobits per second. Now the next significant difference is the power consumption. Right over here on the left we have a power consumption of close to 14 watts for the motorized and 12 watts for the manual. While the smaller camera you can see it is less than 5 watts. You can have two smaller cameras for one of the bigger cameras. Now they both IP rated and one last specification which I thought was interesting. On the smaller camera the operating condition is minus 40 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade while if you look at the VFS or the ZS it is minus 30 to 60 degrees centigrade. Get a wider range of temperatures on the smaller one probably because of the moving parts. Right now I'm going to show some of the footage. Right, so I've logged into the NVR via a web browser and I'll quickly show you some of the settings. I've set the cameras to the maximum resolution, maximum frame rate, maximum data rate. Now the third camera, which is the S camera, that has a maximum bit rate of 6144, so it is a bit lower. In terms of the images, I've left it as it would have been from the factory, so I haven't made any changes to any of the settings. Now just having a look at the live view and I will still show you the recorded footage. The first camera is the manual camera. So this is the VFS. The second camera is the ZS and then the third camera is the S. That is the smaller camera. They're all 4 megapixels and what I've done is I've manually zoomed into the first camera and this is the view you can see with this camera set on the mainstream. I will still show you the recorded footage which should be a little bit clearer. Now I've put a box in front of the garage door which says Makita. Now it is pretty difficult to get the focus right on the manual camera. I know you're only going to do it once but I can tell you it takes a good 10 minutes. Now the window next to it is the same camera but with the motorized zoom. So if I zoom in with this camera we should be able to see a similar picture to the camera on the left. Right, so there we see the manual one and then over here we see the motorized one. Now one of the benefits of the motorized one is I feel like you can fine tune the focus a bit better than the VFS than the manual one. So in this case on the manual one I'm just slightly off the right focus. So if I go to fully zoomed out now this is the range of motion or the range of zoom that you're getting. So we're going from this, this is fully zoomed, to this. And this is quite similar to the 4 megapixel. Notice the color differentiation between the two. There is quite a stark difference between how the color is dealt with on both of these cameras. Right, so this is just the S, this is the viewpoint. Obviously you can't read the Makita there and you can see the width of this frame almost to this tree. Look at that curvature. The tree is curving a bit. And if we look at the motorized one, we can see also quite a bit of curvature here, although it is slightly wider in terms of the width of the frame. Now, I specifically chose this type of view because there's a lot of harsh shadows and there's a lot of movement. You can see there's some trees in the background. Right, so these are the cameras. I'm just letting it record a bit, then I'll show you the footage. I'll also show you the footage of night view one by one. This is the recorded footage. The name of the camera is in the bottom left corner. So VFS is the 
manual camera. The ZS is the automatic camera, the one with the motorized zoom. And then the S is the smaller camera. So I'll be changing between the cameras and then you can see the type of footage and what it looks like. Right now, this is in the night and this is me looking at the cameras and it's not as bright as this in terms of uh, the infrared but just to give you an idea you can see the infrared leds especially on the larger two cameras this is what the area looks like to the naked eye right these are just some rudimentary night tests starting with the vfs fully zoomed i did adjust the focus to make it clearer so this is the best i could get it and there you see me walking across and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine a light into the camera. That's a 20 watt LED light. And you can see that it doesn't really uh, bother the camera much. And there you saw me walking towards the camera. Now the ZS. This is the full picture. And now you'll see me walking towards the camera. Also with the light behind me. And you can see how powerful those LEDs, the infrared LEDs are. You can see how my clothing is so bright. It is black clothing. Now the S, that's the full picture. Notice how this is still in the color mode. So it hasn't automatically changed over. Remember that the settings were a factory default other than the frame rate and the data rate. So we can see that the S does offer a different picture. And then with the light shining into the camera, and then you'll shortly see me walking towards the camera. Just a note that the tests were done with each camera covered one by one. The tests where I'm walking towards the camera, that was all done at once. So all three cameras were on. The reason why you've got to cover the cameras is the infrared LEDs will add the lighting to the scene. Now, just a disclaimer, I know that the smaller camera still had color in the night while the two bigger cameras did not. That can also be set. So I'm not saying the one camera is better than the other. All I'm doing is I'm showing you some example footage. I'm not doing technical tests. These are very rudimentary tests. So there you have it, the three cameras. I've shown the physical attributes and some footage, and I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching, and cheers.